y'all! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky, your local urban sketcher from Hong Kong, and today I am going to be reviewing the Insta360 GoTo camera for recording your art process. My top level conclusions, if you don't really have time to watch the rest of this video, is I think this is a great camera. I found this to be very useful for recording the art processes of my sketches on the go. There are two modes that I use primarily. One is the pro video mode and I could get about like 20 plus minutes of footage from that. And there's also a time shift mode and I can record about maybe 40 minutes to an hour-ish of process. Um, I haven't really gone further than that so it might also be possibly longer. For the pro video case, I record in 1080p in 30 frames per second and for the time shift mode, because there's no other choice, you do record in 1440p in 30 frames per second as well. An extra feature for this camera is that it captures a wide lens. So you can have your camera quite close to your art and you can kind of like reduce that distance so you don't risk a lot of things coming in your way as you're recording and it'll just capture the whole thing. So I've used this with my like tiny sketchbooks, I've used this while capturing my process of recording and making art on an easel, and it was able to capture that whole thing. Granted, my easel is a small 6x8, but you can probably imagine with the wide lens, you can adjust accordingly and a little bit goes a long way because of that wide horizon. So my goal when I was looking for a camera that could record the process of my art is I wanted it to be small enough that I could bring it out with me and it won't be too heavy because before that I was using my phone, which you're on right now, um, to record my process and it wasn't a bad choice. The thing is the phone is also quite heavy so I would have to like mount it on my chest and have this like really weird angle where the phone was like kind of looking down and the art was like right here. Um, or I would have to hang it on a tripod but at the same time that was also quite tricky because if you've ever experienced mounting a camera on a tripod and you put it at an angle, like it's going to be very top heavy. So I needed something small enough that I could bring around and I needed it to be able to record about 30 minutes plus of footage and not just compress it into one time lapse. Because while a time lapse is great, I wanted it to fill up a YouTube video and not just a 30 second reel or YouTube short. So it needed to be long enough to fulfill that purpose. And I started hunting around, I was looking at the DJI Action 2, I was looking at a GoPro Hero, and I was looking at this, and also some other options out there. Um, I can't remember what else I con seriously considered, but I did seriously consider uh, the GoPro, the DJI, and also the Insta360. And after consulting with my friend who is a filmmaker, we did arrive upon this conclusion, and I don't regret it one bit. So quick overview of specs for the camera that I have. There are two storage options. There is a 32GB and a 64GB options. I opted for the 64GB option. And the reason being that even though I did go out and about and I realized that it's very hard to fill 32GB of footage in one go, like usually it does require an, an additional charge um, unless you're shooting it all in one go and you're not just toggling and turning it on and off. Um, but I do want that peace of mind. So if, for example, I am traveling or I'm busy, I don't really have time to transfer that footage. All I have time for was to kind of like charge it quickly in my office where I don't really have my, my laptop available. I can quickly take it out and go and record more footage and I won't be scared of losing any of that footage. Okay, what 64 gigabytes can give you in terms of videos that you record is so one, for me, one 20 minute pro video would cost me around 10 gigabytes to 15 gigabytes of space depending on the duration a little bit and for and that's in 1080p with audio time shift cost me a lot less storage because it lasts a lot longer and because there's no audio yesterday i recorded a video that was about like 40 ish minutes which is compressed into less than three minutes um, with the two times multiplier applied 
and when I removed it, it's in total like five minutes of footage, right? So five times six, 30-ish minutes. Yeah, that's about right. Um, that, that took up about like 3.25 gigabytes of space. So just as a context that like 32 gigabytes is plenty of space because I know the 64 gigabyte model runs out like a lot. I bought my 64 gigabyte model in like a tiny, tiny window where it was available because usually what's being sold and what's available is just a 32 gigabytes. So if you really want the camera and you only have the 32 gigabytes option, I would recommend go get it. Like, I think it's fine. But if you really want to hold out for that extra little bit of storage, I think it's also fine too. Oh, and um, 64 gigabytes does not give you a full 64 gigabytes of footage. It gives you a total of 57.6 or something like that. It's around 57 gigabytes because there's some firmware that they need to store in here and that's why it takes up a little bit of space so it's not true 64 gigabytes you get a little bit less which i'm suspecting would be uh, the similar case with the 32 gigabyte option so storage is a big pro to me especially because this camera unlike the dji action 2 or maybe even the gopro hero this doesn't have a slot for a micro usb or an external memory card so whatever is in here is what you're gonna get so I just opted to get the bigger storage version. And also because, so how I got this camera was I kind of crowdfunded it for my birthday. Um, so instead of everyone getting me all these different gifts, I this year one of my goals was to be a little bit more intentional with my purchases and my acquisitions. And I just didn't want to be receiving gifts that I won't be using because I know that people would be putting a lot of thoughts to their gifts. So I kind of want them to know that their gift is being put to good use. So instead of having um, people kind of like asking me what they want and then buying me different things, I just pulled together like a fund in order to raise money to get me this camera as well as its accessories. And it's like the best birthday gift ever. I like bring it with me everywhere because it's so small. It fits right in my pocket, like actually. and. It's been so instrumental to my video making process. The camera does have a mic. The mic is at the very top. It's got a little hole on the top and this is where all the audio is recorded. Um, not the greatest audio. I know that if you use like the DJI Action 2, there is actually a module that allows you to connect it to like an external mic or something. But just something to keep in mind in case that is what you're looking for. Also, those um, video specs are just for the long duration videos. I do tend to record a little bit of B-roll on this as well. Um, usually those wide angle shots, shots of me like walking in, shots of me walking out, shots of me sketching. Um, it's all recorded using this. So it's more than enough for me to record like a couple of sessions on the go. But generally because of the battery life, like it does, um, it does last you about like half a day of recording, not much longer. I would recommend just charging it after every session. So let me talk a little bit about the two modes that I shoot in. So pro video mode and time shift mode, these are both modes that shoot both horizontally and also vertically. So in its essence, like Insta360 records like a circular video and then it just crops accordingly and you can even like narrow in or narrow out so you get more of that fisheye effect and also that linear effect depending on what you choose. Um, so in both modes, I can choose to use that footage either for a reel by like speeding it up or like capturing bits and process of it, or I can choose to crop it in a horizontal format, which fits for like a YouTube video. So the aspects are either 16 by 9 or 9 by 16. In pro video mode, you can even crop it to 1 times 1, which is um, always useful, but hardly ever used anymore. Like I don't think anybody uses square footage anymore anyways. So pro video mode um, is basically what they sell themselves on. It's the ability to switch between that horizontal, vertical, 1x1, and you're actually able to use the app to apply a lot of different settings and a lot of different edits, including like um, speeding up your footage, slowing down your footage, um, being able to crop accordingly, both on a mobile app and also a desktop app. Whereas I think for a video mode, you're kind of fixed with a certain resolution. And then the other mode that I use a lot is time shift. So this is what I'm going to focus on a little bit because I couldn't find a video on it for some reason. But basically time shift, I confuse it at first with time lapse. And time lapse, what it does is it captures like pictures 
every few seconds or whatever interval you set it and then it stitches it all together to become like one video whereas for time shift they capture a video at like six times speed so this is the answer that i found that an insta360 support person wrote on reddit time shift speeds up your footage by six times it does not record audio and um in your edit in your insta360 app by default it adds another two times multiplier, which means that your video is sped up by 12 times, but you can always remove that two times multiplier or even slow it down to get it a little bit closer to real time. And I found that to be the most economical way to record my process without having this camera kind of like blow up in my face if I ever do decide to sketch longer than 20 minutes at any given time. For the resolution, in pro video mode, I do record in 1080p. So this actually records up to 4K, but the reason why I don't record in 4K is because A, it takes up a lot of storage and honestly on YouTube, because most monitors and most laptops, they're still in 1080p. I don't really think that going beyond 1080p is going to make a huge difference. Like most people actually really do not mind. I'm trying to be careful to say like, this is not just YouTube um, because it's not, like it's a lot of work that goes into YouTube videos. But I just wanted to say that it's like 1080p for me is good enough for its purpose and I don't need to go all the way up to 4k it's the same case with my videos that I take on my phone actually I do take all my footage in 1080p maybe one day when I am more confident in being able to process a lot of storage then I'll upgrade to 4k but in the meantime I'm quite happy with 1080p Reason number two for recording in 1080p is because this little device does heat up quite fast. So if you think about it, it is a camera. It's so small and it's processing all that information inside this tiny little thing. So the heat has to go somewhere. And there's actually like no real ventilation on this thing. So it does heat up quite a bit. Oh, and also because this thing is waterproof. That's why it's like fully covered. Um, so. That's part of the reason why I record in 1080p is to be able to extract longer footages out of each session. So even though in theory, this does not have like a limit recording time, but when it overheats, it just stops. Like it doesn't beep, nothing like your footage would just stop recording. So that is the downside of recording with this tiny camera. But honestly, you're going to encounter this issue with everything. You're going to encounter this issue with all your other cameras that you work with. Um, I know like, some other cameras have a limit of maybe like 15 minutes of recording. And if you use a, a DSLR, like a pro camera, it also has like a 30 minute hard time stop of recording. So it is something that, that you will encounter, like that time lim limit. Although for the DSLR and the video recording, it's not the reason for it recording, the recording stop at 30 minutes is not because of the heating issue. Um, it's another issue, but like this is a time limit that you have to uh, deal with anyway. What's the point of me saying this? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to extract as long of a footage as possible from this. So this doesn't have a time limit. So I'm just trying to make use of that as much as possible um, by not overworking it for it to be like 1080p. On to the fun part, accessories. How I record with my camera because I don't just use it like this. Fun parts. Carry on. That is my notes back there. So I'm referencing everything. I wrote everything down. I've got a plan, y'all. This is serious business. Water break. Ooh, what nobody tells you about being a YouTuber is that you talk a lot. That. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, accessories. Accessories. If you don't have any accessories, using this with like the case is completely fine. So you just open it up. And then there's these like two flaps at the back that you can open up like so. And then you basically have a surface for a tripod to stand on. Not that my hand is steady, but you basically have a surface for a tripod to stand on and it'll just hold itself like that. And you've got yourself a tripod. So you don't even really need to own a tripod for you to use this. Um, the thing is, you just need to be able to place this strategically in order to get the angles that you want. That being said, I'm going to show you my two favorite accessories. So I bought this pack, the all accessory pack, um, because I got funding from my friends. So why not? And it comes with like a lot of these things. You see that empty slot right there? That's where the camera is supposed to go. 
But yeah, so my most used accessory is this thing. It's called the pivot stand. And what this is, it is a stand with a sticky surface on the back that can attach to like a lot of different surfaces. Oh, now I need to wash it now that I just used it. And it's uh, reusable. So what happens is you can wash it with like warm water and just let it air dry and then just slide it back in so that dust doesn't come in contact with the surface. And you can use it like that as like a little tripod thing, which I know a lot of people do. I don't. Uh, what I do is I try to stick it onto surfaces. So for example, I'm on a bus or on a tram and there's like a little ledge or some surface. So it's actually strong enough to hold up vertically as well. Like I've used like this method to record myself cooking. Um, but that's a whole different channel, isn't it? And I would just plop the Insta360 here because it's magnetic oh my god the insta360 go to is magnetic and i did not mention this at all but yes it is magnetic this whole setup by the way waterproof because there is no electronic c thingy majiggy involved in this little stand like it's all plastic i don't even know if it's metal well there's magnet in here but yeah it's all plastic so completely waterproof you can take it underwater not that you're gonna sketch underwater maybe but uh, yeah, so this is what I will use a lot um, when sketching in narrow surfaces. The other option, um, because recording with this means that um, your battery life is limited to just this small thing, which is actually quite a lot already. Um, for sketching on public transport, I never needed more than the battery that is on here. But this case does charge. I don't know if I mentioned that either. Oh my god, I need to do a proper overview. And so I have this tripod. Wait, I need to show you this like cool tripod. This is a Insta360 selfie tripod stick. And when you push that right there, it just like blossoms into a tripod. And it is super long. And how you do it is you just pull it out. Like this whole thing can't even fit in the screen but it is super tall, so when I plop it on the ground, this is about the height that it goes. It's about like one meter, and it's about just tall enough for me to put a sketchbook down here. And then what I'll do is I'll screw on the Insta360 like so. All right. I'll open it like this, and then I'll just put my sketchbook underneath and I'll start sketching. And usually from this distance, I could record the whole sketchbook because again, Wide angle, smart engineers. Oh, and closing it, super easy. I just push everything in. Make sure this whole thing snaps shut. Got my tripod on the go. Great, always in my bag. Another accessory that I use my Insta360 Go 2 with is actually this small rig. I need to find out the specifications of this, but I think I bought like the smallest one imaginable. So this is kind of like a magic arm and what it does is like it's got a clamp on one end and then on the other end it's got the camera screw and it's just basically like a magical kind of like weird octopusy tentacly thing but when you like lock it it will just stay in that position and like it locks everything from like here all the way down to here so the angle doesn't change. So I can just clamp it to the side of my easel. Like I can just like undo the clamp, put this on the easel, close it, and I'll adjust the camera accordingly to be able to capture that angle that I want on the easel. It also helped that this pivots a little bit and has like a really sturdy like hinge. And I'll be able to capture like my footage that way. Cause again, Wide angle. It doesn't need to be very far from your artwork to record everything. There are other accessories that go with it. Um, one that I've tried before I got that tripod was this thing. So this connects to a camera stand. So prior to getting that tripod, what I would do is I would like put this on. I would find like some um, surface to put this tripod down in. Also because this bottom bit is magnetic so it can like stick into weird surfaces and i would just angle it down like so in order to capture my sketches wait let me 
and put the Insta360 Go to for full effect. Bam! Full footage. Another accessory that I've tried is the snap cap. So, actually I don't know if this is the official term, but I assume that because it fits on a cap and that's how most people use it. So I'll take a cap, I'll just slide this thing in, and it sits on the bottom of my cap. Also because it has magnets in here. So when I open up my 360, sorry, when I use my Go 2, I can just snap it on. And I can put on my cap and I can record the footage top down kind of. Um, it's a bit weird though, cause like if I'm not sitting down, like if I'm standing and I'm looking up and down, the footage does go like zooming in, zooming out. And I think it's because there's some um, horizon lock or adjusting that the camera does in order to make sure that your footage is steady. So I don't really use this as much as I would use a tripod because I just found that it's a lot easier for the camera to adjust that way. And that's just the kink of this camera, I guess. Maybe for other cameras, this wouldn't be a problem. But for this one, it is. So we just have to adjust our workflow a little bit. Like it's not a, it's not a life changing thing at all. The last accessory that actually, this was the accessory that like made me buy the go-to, but I never ended up using it, is this pendant. So this pendant is magnetic and your camera can like stick to it. And the purpose of this pendant is that you wear this inside your shirt. So you put it around your shirt, you, or sorry, you put it inside your shirt actually. Oh, the snapping is going to be really loud because the mic is right here. And you can just snap it on right there. And now you have like an Insta360 capture to your chest. And what a lot of people do and what I've seen people do is people would like sketch like this and it will capture that view. That's like expectations, right? The reality is, okay, no, first of all, nobody sketches like this. Nobody sketches like perpendicular to like the ground, everybody scratches at an angle and most likely it will be tilting up facing you. So a snap cap clip is actually, it makes a lot more sense because it captures that like view versus this, which captures just like a side thing. Second of all, I think this chest mount is, or chest mounts in general, I think are built for male bodies. Like if you're a female body, like I'm not that much of a busty gal, but you know, having it on my chest does make the camera tilt upward a little bit. Um, show you on the side. See, it like goes up, so it not it doesn't capture the view straight, but it captures the view slightly tilted up. So for that reason, like I don't really use this pendant unless I'm actually recording footage of me like walking around. Um, there is ways to mitigate this. So if I pull it up a little bit higher, I could get it at an angle that is slightly more straight and more. Um, straight to the ground versus like tilt it up because of my bus situation but uh, then it'll just capture my mask like it's a wide angle camera it captures the bottom of my mask so this has happened like a few times before and I just completely give up on the pendant um, unless I'm like really out and about and I'm like doing some action stuff like if I'm babysitting or I am like if I'm babysitting with like kids around, like I won't really have time to like set up a camera. So I would just put this on and just plop my camera on whenever. Um, or I'm doing some like roller skating and stuff where I don't have a lot of hands to store my accessories. Then I would use the pendant. But otherwise I really won't because I think it it just doesn't work with like women's physiques. Like I, I don't think this is a go-to problem specifically. I know like the DJI Action 2 also has a magnetic pendant. Um, and from using like a chest mount, I know that that was also a problem then. So this is a, this is a chest mount problem. There are a couple more accessories that are really for like um, action camera hooks that I never really use, so we won't go into them. Overall, I do like this camera a lot, a lot. And I would really highly recommend it for anybody who has like some budget to spare to buy this camera and use it to record the process of your art videos. But honestly, there are so many clamps now made for phones and I would recommend starting with that first. 
before moving on to buying a camera specifically just to record your art process. Um, unless it's something you want to do. If that's your goal, then I actually really strongly recommend this camera. But yeah, isn't it so cute and so tiny and so small? Like how is this thing real and functional and it's just so thoughtful and oh my god. All right, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm Becky, I make like art videos and I do urban sketching around Hong Kong. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to subscribe for more videos, that's also a thing you can do by hitting that red subscribe button down below. I make videos every week about urban sketching around Hong Kong and maybe even elsewhere if travel finally opens up. In the meantime, I've been Becky, you've been awesome for staying to watch this whole video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye! That was, that was a Peter McKinnon thing to do. I've been watching his videos a lot, trying to get some tips from him. Um, it's been fun. I don't know if I rock the hat look. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I miss anything. Uh...